This is Otaku Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We dig deep into the great anime of the past to give you the context you need to fully appreciate the best this medium has to offer. Let's jam. Welcome to the broadcast. I hope you're having a good day wherever you happen to be right now. This is Otaku Station, where today we'll be talking about the fifth episode of Anne of Green Gables. Uh, and uh, quick update, Sarah, the neighbor girl, is still here helping with the garden. She's actually done a lot, uh, and I've asked her to pause for a moment and come inside and research what we've planted and actually document it all. Um, turns out I have kind of a passion for documenting and recording things, There's this whole thing, right? Uh, so uh, that will be really helpful for us in the future. Meanwhile, I've actually been thinking a lot about the music of Anne of Green Gables. So let's head up to the research room to talk about that. Welcome to the research room. Now, I'm no music expert, so I don't have slides here, but I have noticed a few things about Anne's music. Now, according to the Ghibli Wiki, the music was composed by several individuals, and delightfully, that includes all the music. Both the opening and ending credit themes are original to this show. Now, let's look at the music as a whole. The composers went for a relatively modern soundtrack to my ears, where you feel like you could hear the soundtrack on the radio, on an easy listening station, most of the time. The opening theme in particular is bright and colorful, the saxophone adding a slightly jazzy undertone, perfectly reflecting Anne's personality, bright, cheerful, energetic, and multi-layered. Right. Then you've got the insert songs, the songs with actual lyrics that are used occasionally throughout the show, and those are meant to pull us into individual moments. These are more soulful, emotional pieces, full of soaring strings and almost mournful singing, and Takahata uses those to highlight particular emotional moments for Anne, I think very effectively. The rest of the soundtrack uses a surprising variety of instruments. I heard violins, guitars, horns, flutes, pianos, drums, even a harp and what sounds like a xylophone in one piece. And this is important for a show that portrays such a rich emotional life as Anne's. You need to be able to hit a lot of different emotional tones and the show definitely does that. Now, what's also interesting to me is that most of the songs are played at a relatively slow pace, certainly not Eurobeat. Um, and this is very appropriate for a quiet farming environment like Green Gables and Avonlea. Just listening to the soundtrack on its own, and you can find it out there, feels like a cup of hot tea and a glance out of a window at a rural countryside. Perfect. So. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, let's head on back down and uh, get back to it. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Quick update. Unfortunately, we've had another setback outside. Um, Sarah went out to the garden and I heard her squeal like a pig. So I ran out there and found one of the seed beds that Sarah's spent basically all morning on was all dug up. Uh, it's like some animal got in there and dug into them. Poor Sarah, she's in a state. So I put her back down in the video room with another croissant and more episodes of Sailor Moon. So hopefully she'll come down like last time. Anyway, um, got that to deal with. Meanwhile, uh, I know Steve and John are anxious to see how things work out for Anne. So let's get them on the line and continue our analysis of Anne of Green Gables. All right, it looks like we've got John and Steve back on the line. Good to see you guys, as always. Are you ready for more Anne of Green Gables? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> With some trepidation, given the 
uh, heart wrench of Anne's backstory in the last episode, we continue on into Anne of Green Gables. We will soldier on. We will soldier on. Much like Anne. Interesting how this looks a little bit like Green Gables. Um, mm. Flopped, but... Hmm. Green house. It's so lovely attention to detail by the uh, by the artists. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it looks... Uh, it looks rather pretty. Just saying. Yeah. To that point, notice the chickens that are trying to get out of the way uh -huh. of the carriage as mm -hmm. it's coming in. Because that would be a thing. And they're also in that classic Scooby-Doo fashion. You can tell there's a background and then things that are not mm -hmm. on the background. Yeah. They're in front <laughs> of the background like the chickens. Definitely. So why do we have this moment? Uh, remember that the much littler girl was going back to being adopted. And so she's seeing another girl who already has a home. I know none of this is intentional, but boy, does it just kind of feel like this entire scene is just rubbed right in Nan's face. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that lady is, she's trying to be upbeat. You know, mm -hmm. Anne's obviously not upbeat. Even yeah. the kid picks up the vibe. Mm -hmm. The little girl picks up the vibe. Yep. But it's just like, this is, uh, for the viewer, it's the emotional torture of it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Spencer obviously doesn't know the situation. Uh, yeah. It should also be pointed out, this is not in the book. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's no mention of either of these girls in this chapter. Okay. So this is Marilla exercising uh, social graces, right? Of saying right. that, you know, obviously a mistake was made, but I'm not going to hold you closely to that by saying, well, we should have been more careful with our message. Um, again, getting across the fact that I think it's easy to see Marilla as extremely sort of closed in and focused on herself, but she understands the social context. Right. Marilla's <laughs> matter of factness about things is um, not rude, but mm -hmm. it is no. um, at, in the context of a child standing next to you that is yeah. dealing directly with yeah. this. It is kind of tactless of Yes. Her. Even though there she is, is no being, subtlety. Yeah, she's being socially graceful to uh, her adult counterpart, but <clears> she <throat> is being tactless towards Anne in this. Yeah. Um, and this was a, an age when children should be seen but not heard, right? Yes. And they were expected to kind of um, exist, right? And not necessarily... Right worry about their emotional state and i don't mean that no one cared about kids but i mean in these situations it's like the adults are talking yeah you know you child just stay where you are and don't worry about it right it's kind of the the mentality here i feel mm. um i should Still also point brutal out, to watch <laughs> it, it is uh i should also point out i misspoke uh in the novel um she miss spencer miss spencer does ask flora to corroborate her story about um, wanting uh, Marilla wanting a, a girl rather than a boy. Um, mm. So she is mentioned at some point, but I don't recall any mention of I forget her name, the little girl. Lily? Well, Lily. Uh -huh. Lily. There we go. Should also point out, just in case folks are curious about animation things, there is a smudge on Anne's forehead. And yep. if you're seeing it, it's kind of zooming in. There's a little bit of, of gray. That's not a mark on Anne's face that's there consistently. It's just somebody smudged the literal physical cell. And that's what you're seeing. <laughs> she's yeah. not just dirty. She's smudgy. <laughs> yeah. So this is what I've noticed is a very Japanese way of speaking, which is you bring up a topic and then trail off. And that is meant to say, I don't really agree with this, or I'm not thrilled with this. But instead of digging my heels in objectively, I'm going to kind of bring it up in this neutral way. And you're supposed to imply or infer from that that I'm um, uh, expressing a concern. Right. right. So she says, is that Mrs. Blewett? And then looks away. And then looks down at Anne. 
So what this is telling us is that Marilla has reservations about Mrs. Blewett. And, and Anne's then... look back up <laughs> at <laughs> yeah. her. I'm sorry. Like, saying, <laughs> Please not to call Rescue mine me. again. <laughs> well, I, I think from what was just said, it's like, oh, she has a large family. It's like we mm. can take from what we've heard of Anne's story on the journey here yep. that she's kind – You could you, to put yourself in her mindset is, oh, no, I'm going to be caretaking a bunch of kids again. Yep. Yeah. And it's going to be just me not being seen but just caring for all the other mm. children that are are seen. Which is – which – and Mrs. Spencer said she can't find anyone who can help. Hmm. I'll also point out that Mrs. Spencer is portraying the classic sort of fixer personality of, uh, you know, if something doesn't work out, let's just find something that will resolve the situation and move forward with that. No larger picture, just jumping right. to the next solution. Isn't it interesting that Marilla advances forward to be next to Anne? Yeah. Slightly protecting you know gesture there hmm. it's definitely a comforting move yeah. to stand closer to her than to stand away so yeah. hmm. interesting also notice Anne's posture right? arms rigid to the side pressed together trying to be as small as possible bundle of stress yeah she looks like a Scooby Doo villain. Yeah, yeah really. She does. <laughs> they look like they're ready no. to pull the mask off. It's Mr. Carruthers. <laughs> no whites of her eyes. Just like a really wow, you know. It is the Wicked Witch of the West. Just yeah, straight up. <laughs> Would have been a great time to have her walk up. <laughs> oh no! A monkey's yeah. flying. In. Yeah, uh, run for it. Yeah, they, they they are not being subtle here. So Marilla in the book. <clears throat> Marilla says she knew Mrs. Blewett only by sight as a small, shrewish-faced woman without an ounce of superfluous flesh on her bones. And I wow. think they, uh, they they nailed her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be frightened, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's the look of, I'm taking your soul. Yeah. <laughs> She, Mrs. Blewett wasn't a handsome woman. She took more after her father, who had been kicked in the face by a cow. <laughs> oh. Well. <laughs> well, the sad thing here is that she's looking at, at Anne, and Anne's is totally in, intimidated. Like, she looks down immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She knows what's coming. Exactly. But yeah. Marilla, I mean, she's giving her the stink eye to Miss Blewett. True. Yeah, you're right. I mean yeah. that that is not a neutral face look on Marilla. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you absolutely. Right. So it's like that's a really interesting reaction. She's mm -hmm. approached Anne to be more connected to, mm -hmm. comforting to, and here kind of giving it a disapproving look. Like interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it should also be pointed out as we often do, what's not happening here. Anne's not running away. She is kind of standing her ground, but also recognizing that she's trapped. You know, there's nothing right. she can do here, really. Uh, yeah. But she's she stared at this woman's face for kind of as long as she could, and now she's looking down, kind of trying to protect herself and and re retreat into her own world. It's interesting here how Anne goes almost catatonic. Um, like well, I mean, she's just looked at her like she was a horse, like, you know, expecting teeth. You know? Yeah. Just like, oh, is she healthy enough? Okay. Yeah. 100%. Well, the flashbacky again to, like, I'm going to be stuck taking care of a bunch of kids, and this lady's not looking like a fun trip. No. Yeah. So, again, speaking of social grace, we are seeing that Mrs. Blewett lacks social grace. Okay. Yeah. Perhaps we should appreciate that Marilla looked shocked. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Her mouth agape. That is not a look you would expect from her. Yeah. You know that? Oh. <laughs> like, wow. What the heck is this? Yeah. Oh, no, she you is. Didn't. Yeah, she is much more composed than this. So that is yeah. shocking. To your point, Steve, about looking at her as though she's a horse. Yeah. 
definitely an appraisal and also, there. And also, no, she didn't say thank you for the for the tea for Good anything. Point. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Just took it and walked over. All mm. right. Yeah. Look at Marilla's expression here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually, well, go ahead, Steve. No, what I was going to say was that you know this whole time you know we're we're talking in the last episode how like she asked Anne, did they treat you well? Because mm. she has in her mind what is being treated well. She's not connecting with this this woman as as this yeah. woman is going to treat Anne well. I don't think she's seeing that. That's a great point. I hadn't even thought about that. Um, it's interesting too here how Marilla is now kind of doing what we've seen Anne do in the past where now she's withdrawing into her own world to think and process and decide what she needs to do here. Yeah, the presentation of the of, of that allows you to infer so much what's going on with this character. Mm. When we have no idea. Yeah, true. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, Marilla could just have sat down because she was tired and she was looking mm-hmm. at the cup going, that's a cup. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's animated even with more limited kind of animation. It's still yeah. animated in such a way that gives you an insight into the character's uh, mindset. Yeah, exactly. Um, because it's thoughtful, right? They, they thought yeah. about how do we get across this character's you know, inner thoughts yeah. without having a echoey monologue happening during yeah. this, you know? I wonder what Matthew's doing at home. I hope the horses have been fed. Yeah. No, we don't need the inner dialogue. This presents enough mm-hmm. to give yep. us what we need. Yeah. And look at the uh, composition here. Marilla looking away. Anne looking down. Right? Everyone's looking in different directions. It's really a very kind of chaotic um, um, composition. But also, Anne's looking towards Marilla. Yeah. effectively, you know, in her direction. Interesting. So you look at the eyes of Anne, you can tell she's looking at the viewer, and we're mm. right here with Marilla. Mm-hmm. So it's like... Yep. It's not really so much of an adoption as it's hiring a farmhand. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, in fairness, I mean, again, you're being adopted into a family, you're, you're still an outsider to an extent, there would might have been some expectation of that at some point, uh, but also notice Anne's stoicness. Right, she's just sitting there and taking it. Um, she's clearly not thrilled about it, but she's yeah. not freaking out. She's not doing anything out, doing doing anything else. Uh, she's just um, not even accepting, but enduring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, again, this is not her first rodeo. Right. Yeah. Boy, there's a facial expression for you. Yeah, yeah. She, she knows what this means, and we get the, you know, the reaction and kind of the crumpling in on herself. I'm gonna quote a bit from the book. Marilla looked at Anne and softened at sight of the child's pale face, with its look of mute misery, the misery of a helpless little creature who finds itself once more caught in the trap from which it had escaped. Marilla felt an uncomfortable conviction that if she denied the appeal of that look, it would haunt her to her dying day. Wow. Yep. Hmm. So that is Marilla's inner thoughts right now. And how on earth did they manage to capture that? (laughs) (laughs) Just visually, perfectly. Mind-boggling. Did she Just narrow her eyes? Interesting. So when she's looking at Anne, she turns her head slowly to look at Miss Bluewell. So right she there. does. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Interesting. That, You're mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Which is conveying that exactly what you read. Yeah. It's just a split second, but it's that. Hmm. Kind yeah. of look where it's like, damn. <laughs> You're right. I, well you know, done. She's saying, I have thought that I, I am thinking, I processed, now I'm acting. Great point. Anne's expression there. Note two, they have added tears, which yeah. we had not seen before, but now we know that's happening. And it's interesting for Takahata to decide not to show her crying, 
but to cut back to her right as Marilla is kind of rescuing her. And again, see the social graces here of Marilla saying, I'm technically reneging on this uh, transaction that we're doing, yeah. but I'm presenting it that you may have misunderstood my intention, right? That, you know, um, I said things and you're, you're mis you know, you're, you, you know, you overreacted in a totally understandable way. You know, I just meant to come here to do this. I'm kind of leading you on, you know, we can move on with this. Clever maneuvering by Marilla here. I More wonder to too, is this... Marilla lied. Hmm. Yeah. She's a very... Well, that she came to bring Anne back. And what you're saying, yes, she's graced oh, yeah, over yeah. it, sort of glossed over it, yeah. but... Sin of a mission. She yeah. lied. Yeah, you know, she, right. she came to give Anne back. Mm -hmm. And now she's like, well, no, Matthew's disposed on, on to keeping her. I just mm -hmm. wanted to find out what was going on. It's like, you lied. You're right. You didn't yeah. take the starch collar kind of mm -hmm. busy, you know, upright lady. <laughs> you just lied to save Anne. Yeah. What a difference in this sort of monolithic slab that is her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? What a difference. Yeah. What a, it's 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 almost as if the heart is beating in her chest. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I love how she's and to your point, John, I love how she's basically using the excuse of well, I didn't shoot the sheriff, but I did shoot the deputy, so let's make this clear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another quote from the book, right after that moment where she sees Anne. Um, moreover, she did not fancy Mrs. Blewett to hand a sensitive, <clears throat> high-strung child over to such a woman. No, she could not take the responsibility of doing that. Yeah. So she realizes, you know, Anne has been put over into her care in a fundamental sense. Yeah. And she is by, you know, she has a responsibility to, to decide to relinquish her or not. This is not simply correcting a mistake. Oh. This is, I have a chance to do something right or wrong here. And notes Anne re note Anne's response. It's not elation. She is still just processing, trying to figure out what's going on. You She's going to offer to reprieve, if you mm -hmm. will. Yeah. yeah. And then as it goes along, she starts to relax. She starts to open up. I also love the opening up of her face right like it just gets a lot more bright lot brighter uh, and such again from the novel during marilla's speech a sunrise had been dawning on anne's face <laughs> I which i think notice. from the stories of anne her past yeah. it you get this sense that we're noticing that marilla is really coming around yeah. And Anne, having had to survive figuring out where people were on the landscape and how to navigate that, yeah. I get the sense that her brightening, because this is a reprieve. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. not, we're keeping her, this is done, this is done right. issue. This is, I could be back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But Anne is reacting like, oh no, 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 this is a good thing. This, mm -hmm. this Something's going on, and she's recognized that Marilla has taken a turn yeah. in her. And it's like, ah... Well, and to, to go a little more depressing, um, mm. Anne is this excited at the prospect of one more night at Green Gables. Right. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's all she thinks she's getting out of this, certainly. But that's, that's enough to brighten her day that much. There we go. Now we get the, the flowers and so forth coming in. Can I say how much I adore that sequence? of Anne rushing up, trying to formulate her words, but respecting Marilla's boundaries, um, you know, realizing that Marilla is kind of processing a lot and also maybe has a headache. So he's like, yeah. uh, 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 okay, I, I don't have to engage here. I can just turn around and be happy on my own. Um, and it speaks to Anne's capacity for emotional maturity whether it's always there or not is another question <laughs> also just very cute animation there of her you know pushing forward on each leg um 
almost uh, skipping in place. And her lost in fantasy again. Mm-hmm. Back to nature, where she feels connected. Now it should be pointed out what Takahata is doing here. The blue flowers obviously represent Anne's inner emotions, but that has spread to the world, right? Everything she is experiencing, everything in her world is suffused with this emotion of happiness. Mm. She was getting a little too joyous. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Had to dial it back because uh, Marilla is not feeling <laughs> quite so joyous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> not expressing quite so much joy, yeah. So, that's interesting. That was her imagination. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> and it amused her. her. Yeah, yeah. Yes. She has to, like, you know, push back a smile at that. <laughs> but it is Anne being assertive in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yes, you, you know, be seen, not heard. But Anne has a distinct opinion on it, and she's yeah. now expressed it. That's mm. good. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't think she expressed that as vehemently about her prior life experiences almost everything right. was oh they were busy oh they had so much going on oh mm -hmm. the husband died oh the wife you know it's like that's a very pointed mm -hmm. i don't you know i don't want to go with that woman she looks like a gimlet yeah like, wow mm -hmm. go in mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like he says <laughs> He's standing there going like, Shane, come back. Come back, Shane. I, I like the implication. He's been standing here the entire time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just waiting. Note the dialogue here. You can call me if you need any help. Marilla says there's no need for that. Anne is disappointed. Why? Because Anne is only valuable if she helps people. Yeah. That, that, that is her sense of self-worth is that she can assist and, and do things around the house. Otherwise, she is not wanted. So when she hears that, that is a direct rejection of her. Yeah. It's a red flag, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, not intentional on Marilla's part, but... Well, and that's any time that Anne has been with anyone. She doesn't know her. She didn't know anything about her parents. Mm -hmm. But any other experience with other people, Anne has to be helpful in some way. Yeah. You know, there isn't... There isn't a like Lily and the other girl miss at the at yeah. the orphanage lady. Mm -hmm. They're just playing. They're running around. They're having fun. Nobody is like monitoring the small child and doing things. They're just having fun. Anne has a shocking lack of fun. Correct. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Love two things about this. First, that they start pulled away from Anne to emphasize her loneliness. And then they zoom in on her expression, and you think she should be feeling happy. But she is processing, presumably, all the emotions of, well, I'm back, maybe, probably, temporarily. This is kind of a good and a bad thing. What's going on? Um, again, this is somebody who is telling a story about real people who really, you know, uh, process emotions in a real way. Even though she's not a real character, I know. <laughs> she's not a real character. really exists, I know. <laughs> well, <clears throat> if Anne has strong feelings about Mrs. Blewett, so does Matthew. Yeah. Marilla has the self-awareness to know that this is unlikely to go perfectly. Mm. And you wonder if that isn't part of why she's been so hesitant so far. That she's like, I've gotten used to the idea of there being a boy around because he's going to be mostly interfacing with Matthew, right? He's going to be mostly doing chores, yeah. working outside, etc. And so I can set the table for another person. Like, that's all going to be fine. I can interact with another human being. That's fine. But the idea that now not only is this child it's going to be pr my primary responsibility, I don't know if I want that. Perfectly understandable. That's and I like her self-awareness to say that I did. Here, say I'll make a terrible bet. <laughs> yes, of it. Okay. I you know, right not that it's, Well, yeah, not and not just I. You know, I'll be responsible, but it's like I could really mess this up. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh oh. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm rolling. Yeah. Is Matthew being funny here? <laughs> I think he is. 
<laughs> I, I think he is. Yeah. I think he's he's just like, wow, you're such a kind-hearted old woman. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're such just full of joy and love. Yeah. Just, don't try to spoil it. He's being very sarcastic. Yeah. Very, very sarcastic. <laughs> but I think Matthew understands that he, he will be the counterfoil to Marilla when yeah. that needs to happen. So, you know, I think he's understanding his own role in, in all of this. Yeah. Well, I think, too, the the good naturedness of it is also it feels like an awareness that he can't really push Merla too hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? He yeah. can't make her do something she's not going to do. Mm-hmm. So he has to kind of play that a little bit off, be like, oh, only be as good and kind to her as you can be mm-hmm. without like pissing her off. Because then yeah. Marilla will be like, well, then she goes back and be like, okay, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta carefully cross this tightrope here and just get to the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is one of those things that, you know, again, it seems cruel that she's not going to tell her that she's going to stay, but certainly a, a thing that adults, especially adults not used to children, would be concerned about is, oh, she's going to be all, you know, frazzled, so I'll just wait until the morning. Um, I don't think this is Marilla being unkind. I think it's just her being yeah. unaware. <laughs> Um, yeah, the idea of Anne crying herself to sleep, you know, it's yeah. kind of like, okay, I don't think Anne Merle, I don't think Merle is thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also possibly some uh, emotional awareness on her where she's also seen how Anne's been behaving since she came back to Green Gables. You know, yeah. Anne's not morose, so there'll be some concern there maybe, but she's not going to be crying herself to sleep, presumably. Yeah. Um, well, and if you take it back to when Marilla is sitting at the tea table and she kind of puts her hand on her head and it's just like oh yeah I don't you know Anne is, ex- is yeah. getting expecting of you know <gasps> but she doesn't say anything mm-hmm. I wonder to what degree is Marilla she doesn't want to tell Anne tonight because she just can't deal it's not a sleep <laughs> yeah. thing she can't deal with Anne being like oh bonnie and the snow queen and blah 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 and shining waters she's like oh dear god i cannot deal with this today yeah it's been a long day yeah. <laughs> she's gonna let her think she's going back to prison and then you know we'll just get through dinner tonight that's all we're doing Marilla's just like don't make me get the pillow yeah oh, I, no. it feels kind of a little like that as well yeah. is the sort of subtext she's like i can't I can't have her unhinged tonight. <laughs> Fair point. I also want to point out, um, not to be negative, but I don't know who they farmed out Marilla's drawing to on this, but that is not on model. No. Um, that, is, that is very much not on model from Marilla's face, so I think someone just tried their best. It looks like King of the Hill. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a moment to study wow. their library. So you've got yeah, Blake, you got Byron, like three Byron. volumes of Byron. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Robert Browning, Browning. Uh, Sir Walter Scott. Scott. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good library. Joseph would point out this is clearly a collection. So he like ordered a series of books, you know, to be delivered. It's like an encyclopedia, right? Yeah, right. Um, because out on the farm, you know, you, there's not a bookstore in town, presumably. Yeah, the library is not just right next door. Yeah. If one at all. Yeah, true. But it also speaks to Matthew. Mm. He's educated. You're right. Mm-hmm. He's, he's not just a farmhand. He's, he's educated. Because that's not something you just have as, as a... You know, illiterate farmer or whatever, just you yeah. know, somebody's a homebody. I mean, this is something he got for himself and probably Marilla as well. You know, again, entertainment. This is the form of entertainment yeah. you have, but that's not like you know, um, you know, reading this. <laughs> it's not the farmer's <laughs> almanac you know, and then right. something about mm-hmm. seed and crop rotation. <clears throat> you know, that's that's stuff that you read and you think over and you mull it, mull it over. Yeah. That's a great point. <laughs> Um, also note that she went for Sir Walter Scott, so that's probably Ivanhoe, right? Um, yeah. or maybe the Lady of the Lake, something like that. Uh, you know, that's that's significant literature. 
Also, they drew the shadow of her hand. Yeah. On the right, there's just a, a light thing underneath her hand on the book. It's interesting. I wonder why they did that. Hmm. Cool. He's that. having her read to him. Good point. I didn't even connect that. You're right. Yep. Huh. I wonder if he's figuring out how much schooling she may need. Mm. Like maybe he's he's this is his part of of taking care of Anne. You know, Marilla mm. wants to bring her up as a proper woman. You know, that kind of, you know, kind of the girl, whatever. And be, you know, you know all the social etiquettes and things. And maybe he's can kind of concerned about well, you know, how well can she read? How can how well does she understand things? And have her read to me and see see how. I know that she knows words, but can she convey them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. And it and it's Matthew. And it's Matthew. So he's actually yeah. enjoying spending time with her. True. Yes. Yeah. You know, on a very fundamental level, where it's just he's excited that Marilla has, you know, softened as much mm-hmm. as she can <laughs> and that Anne is here now and he can actually enjoy spending some time with her yeah absolutely wow is that a punch in the gut it's all a dream all a dream and you know this it's a kid's show thank you for screwing with my mind <laughs> yeah, I know let me go on and talk about how great Matthew is and it's all a dream it's a snow globe <laughs> there's no bookcase in her room right you know, and it's a detail you would be expected that Takahata expected you to pick up on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Didn't you just know that? You should know that. You should have realized that. Gah. Also, notice again what Anne did. Um, Marilla called to her. She woke up. She has completely forgotten that she's been called down to dinner. And she's just spacing out up here, you know, so, oops. I'll also point out. It's been a tiring day for Anne. So, yeah. Not surprising that she fell asleep. Anne is trying hard to read Marilla. She sure is. Um, slight animation thing again. A lot of little marks on the drawings oh, yeah. here. So as we go in, you'll see kind of speckles move. Uh, kind of move in and out. Oops, we can go back a little bit. Mm. So as she... Oh, I switch between the yeah, forehead. Yeah, stuff on the yeah. forehead keeps bouncing around. So again, if you ever see that animation, it's just a... Just a... Little thumbprints and such. She's got leprosy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But to your point, John, this is a, a great example of it. Like, you see her expression where one eyebrow's raised a little bit just to further get across the idea that she's trying to read Marilla. Yeah. Matthew, on the other hand, you can read like an open book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Matthew is saying Marilla is a decision maker. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I like the framing of this with Bonnie right there, kind of uh, almost towering over everyone. This sort of symbol of home. It also gives you a nice perspective, like you're peeking in, because you know Bonnie's sitting in the window. Yeah. So you're kind of like peeking in the window True. into the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. good point. Um, also interesting how they are, I'm just realizing, I'd love to go back and, and see, Anne is now literally on the same level as Matthew and Merla. Mm. Right, okay. their heads are basically the same height, so they're kind of giving us that. They're starting to feel a bit more like a cohesive group, potentially. Marilla smiled. She sure yeah. did. That is a straight up smile. Wow. It's like beaming for her. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You can I almost hear a... the creaking and the cracking <laughs> of the skin, you know? <laughs> when she puts the candle down, hmm. oh, yeah. she gets a serious look on her face. Interesting. That's, I think, her turning to training mode. Oh, great point. Yeah. So she brings in, you know, Anne comes upstairs, she's, you know, she's prepping for the night, she puts the candle down, and it's that moment of like, okay, now we have to talk about the clothing on the floor and how to properly do things. Mm-hmm. So she steals up for it, turns around. Yeah. 
and it I and it felt also like to me like you know when she first put the candle down and she didn't trust Anne to to actually <laughs> extinguish it. True. So yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Um, in this parts of the book, a lot of when um, uh, so uh, you'll have to remember it a little better if you stay here. Admonished Marilla, right? There's a lot of those adverbs here. Where to your yeah. point, I think she's she's in education mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back to that point uh, there's a line somewhere where I think it's a little bit later where in her thoughts where it says that uh, Marilla feels that you should that uh, children should be moral um, children should be given moral education so she kind of defaults to giving Anne some moral advice in every bit of conversation like she just defaults <laughs> to Okay, I'm going to make a moral out of this. And it's, you know, wow. not always the best approach with children. Is Matthew sitting on a fainting couch just in case Marilla comes downstairs and says, Anne's got to go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to that point, though, um, it is, and it is kind of a fainting couch, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in, in design. Uh, but you notice how humble a piece of furniture it is, right? There's yeah. there's yeah. no pattern to the cloth. It's just a simple couch where you sit. Interesting here how Marilla doesn't leave the room while Anne changes, uh, which is a slightly more intimate in the best sense, you know, act. And she's also observing how Anne does the things so she knows Anne yeah. can do the thing. Can I and Marilla just sours the entire brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that said, to that point, you know, when a child says, I don't say my prayers, they are in danger for their immortal soul. Yeah, right? right. That, that, that is not a thing that you take lightly. And Marilla is being remarkably restrained here. Right? She is asking questions. She's saying, what's going on? She's shocked. And she's... Yes. Asking a lot of questions and saying, well, what's going on? What do you understand? Okay, you know who God is good. Um, but, like, she's not flying off the handle here, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, impressive. But to, to your point about the intimacy of her being in the same space when Anne's changing. Yeah. The intimacy of, huh? When she turns mm, around where it's like, yeah. that is an unguarded Marilla moment. True. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, you really are just incrementally you're getting there yeah <laughs> moving along okay so let's talk about what's going on here first the comedy right mm. um but also and kind of talking back to marilla um and continuing to engage her on this topic again imagine a, yeah, an 11 year old child at this time engaging with an adult about the appropriateness of saying prayers about god all this kind of stuff like just the, the sheer cheek of Anne is is amazing um, I mean, it's like she's almost just saying to Marilla, like, don't you see I'm a freaking ginger? We're, we're like, you know, sit and spawn. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you know, come on. Well, the, the sheer act of walking while mm. talking to an adult yeah. over to the bed and seating yourself mm -hmm. to be in a relaxed posture while you're addressing an adult who is standing. It's like, yeah, that's, that's wow. Okay, Ann, mm -hmm. you got some chops, kid. Yeah. Got some chops thousand percent um then there's also the deeper psychological excuse me deeper psychological aspect of um you know it's easy to be bad if you have red hair you know and sees a fundamental aspect of herself as something that separates her from um i mean a god but also this fundamental part of society right she it's, it's like she can't relate to that because of how she was made. Um, you know, speaking to her, her feelings of alienation. <laughs> Marilla's expression. Yeah. She's like, what? She, she's like, the lightning bolt's about to come down. Yeah, right. Exactly. Do I get the holy water and, and dunk her in it? Or do I get her? Uh, yeah, I just don't like God. What, what, you know, <laughs> that, that's, that's the fact. It's like, ah. <laughs> What God ever do for me? What? It's basically what she's saying. You know, from Marilla's perspective, she expects Anne to start spinning her head around. Yeah. <laughs> the 
I've invited the demon. I've invited evil into my home. <laughs> and so this is speaking, I mean, A to N situation, um, but also to that very childlike approach to things. It's very pragmatic. You know, I'm too tired. I don't see the, the point in it, so I just don't do it. Understandable. And note here, again, Marilla's reaction. She does not say, you heathen. Right. Um, she just say she's pushing all of that to the side and saying, well, while you're here, you have to say prayers. And this is a remarkably mature way of dealing with this, of saying, just here's the task for you to do and focus on the task. Back to the, to the switching modes. Yeah. Marilla goes from like, huh? To back to where she's in the inculcation mode. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as you're here, yeah. you have to stay prayers. Mm -hmm. The and switch of positions. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It actually brings Marilla down to Anne's eye level. Yeah, great point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Literally the same level. So I have to say, at this point um, in the story, uh, Marilla's kind of having a, uh, an issue. Here's the quote. Marilla felt more embarrassed than ever. Uh, and we'll see if she says this. Um, she had intended to teach Anne the childish classic, Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. But she had, as I have told you, the glimmerings of a sense of humor, uh, which is simply another name for a sense of fitness of things. And it suddenly occurred to her that that simple little prayer, sacred to white-robed childhood lisping at motherly knees, was entirely unsuited to this freckled witch of a girl who knew and cared nothing but God's <laughs> love. <laughs> Since she had never had it translated to her through the uh, medium of yeah. human love. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. Is that one of the reasons why I think Marilla is like reacting the way she is? Is that she's more? It's not that it's the way that Anne is acting. It's the horror, the horror of realizing that Anne has never been taught, yeah, to do this, or has been encouraged to do this, yeah, or or, or not given any consideration to understand why this is important. Exactly. Yeah. She, she's been told to do it as a rote thing. She has no connection right. to what it means. Yeah. Like, like she could completely understand what Marilla was saying, and she just rolled it off, and she was saying, you know, it sounds fun, it sounds good, it sounds interesting, but, you know, there's no belief in the words. It just sounds interesting. Yeah. And what she places as important is being out in, you know, connection to nature, as, as we keep saying. Yeah. And, you know, and then she says, I just feel the prayer coming on. When you're dealing with this kind of a thing, um, I'm not Catholic, but you know, there, there's there is a a process here, <laughs> you, you know, that 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 is followed by certain denominations, mm -hmm. and you know, and Barilla is just like, how have you never been taught this? Yeah. You know, Nani, no. yeah. Nani? Exactly. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there we go. I think that expression. Sums up what we just said, where she's just like, yeah. "No, that's that's no. not gonna work." <laughs> Marilla's still exquisitely uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I think it's because you know she realizes she's talking to Anne about you know, what are the blessings of her life. The only blessings in Anne's life are the things right here. Yeah. Yep. Mm. No, she still doesn't appear to. Uh, trust Anne with the candle. Yeah. Well, given Anne's flights of fancy, I wouldn't trust her with the candle. I mean, me too. <laughs> yeah. I'd wait we till flame she's... is fun. Oh my God, the house is on fire. <laughs> I'd wait till she's 16, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, that is a big stretch for Marilla. It is. Um, yeah. But I just want to call out here Anne's uh, need for. Um, approval right mm -hmm. where she realizes oh I didn't say the prayer correctly I, I, I you know if I said this is that okay uh, you know this this you know <laughs> Marilla literally said good night <laughs> I'm leaving the room now <laughs> and, and yeah. still like trying to latch on to her um, but to your point you know John's and headspace she doesn't yet have the answer that she is staying. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Marilla hasn't said anything. Matthew hasn't said anything. So yep. for Anne, somewhere ticking in the back of that, mm-hmm. looking for this approval, is tomorrow could be the end of it all. Yep. You know, so some... I, I wouldn't ascribe this sort of mental gamery mm. to say that she said, thank you for all these blessings, everything that's right here. Thank you for Green Gables. Mm-hmm. Let me stay. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying she was doing that in any oh, kind yeah, of, no. like, agenda. Yeah, no, no, no. But it's, you know what I mean? For her, in her mind, kind of spit that out now, because tomorrow it, it's all yeah. going to be gone. Mm-hmm. It's like... Yeah. I also have to appreciate how they change the coloring on both this room and the other room as she goes through the door, because the candle yeah. is moving mm-hmm. into the hallway. It's one of the little details you don't have to have, but it's, there's enough. So Marilla's admitting to herself now her duty. Yeah. You know, oh, it's a tough world. I guess I'm just going to have to do something. Like, really? Come on, lady. Yeah. <laughs> and got to you, and now you're just being like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, And you'll also notice up to this point, she's been speaking vaguely. Of, well, we'll keep Anne. And now it's, okay, going to Sunday school. Got to get clothes for her. Like, she has a task list now, so it's much more concrete. Yeah. I'm just still so surprised that she was so amenable to Anne saying yours respectfully versus amen. Yeah. That the Marilla that we met at the start of this would have been like, you cannot say that. That is not <laughs> how that is done. And that she is like, oh, I don't know if it really matters. Like, oh, my God, who are you? What'd you yeah. do with the other one? <laughs> um, so in the, uh, in, in to, on Marilla's side of it, to quote the book, uh, after Anne says, asks, uh, says, I could have made it much more flowery if I'd had a little more time to think it over. Poor Marilla was only preserved from complete collapse by remembering that it was not irreverence, but simply spiritual ignorance on the part of Anne that was responsible for this <laughs> extraordinary petition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a. Uh, Marilla is going to have some uh, some <clears throat> growth to do here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that was episode five of Anne of Green Gables, <clears throat> and it's interesting how much they kind of put into this episode compared to previous episodes tended to be. Um, not dragged out, but tended to spend a lot of time on a relatively small amount of passage of time in the, yeah. in, in, the in the world. And with this, we have, I mean, half a day, really? Yeah. Um, you know, between taking her out, actually <clears throat> most of a day, because I think they, you know, they, they go out yeah, basically. They left in the morning. Yeah. yeah, in the morning uh, to, to take uh, Anne back, because uh, she spent the night before, right? Yep. Crying. Uh, um, mm-hmm. And then they they take her uh, this uh, this way. So yeah, most of a day, and um, we cover all this stuff around almost taking Anne back, Merlo making up her mind, bringing her back, and then Anne, uh, you know, kind of settling in a little bit. Uh, but it's kind of interesting here too, thinking how. Going back to that earlier point about Anne being, um, you know, being a long day, I can't imagine being 11 years old, going through all of this, and having a theological discussion with an adult right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right before bed. Like, I would be conked out. Um, Anne has energy well, to spare. Well, that nap did her, did her a lot of good. True. You know, yeah. That really you know, yeah. charged her up there. Good point. Good point. If I was Anne going through that, then I'd be like, uh, Marilla, come on. Just, just, I know I'm 11, but shot of whiskey, okay? Just, <laughs> just shot of whiskey. Yeah. At a day. At a day. Mm-hmm. You only get that if you have a toothache or a fever, Steve. Come on, yeah. be serious. <laughs> <laughs> I've been living with existential dread for the past 72 hours. <laughs> and I'm 11. I don't even know what the word means. <laughs> And possibly the past seven years, much less <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, um, well, I like, I, you know, 
the long carriage ride, the the, mm-hmm. the backstory, everything that's been, you know, run through to this point mm-hmm. has established some points, mm-hmm. points that are consistent and <clears throat> that are consistent to Matthew and to Marilla. And it's really nice to see the way that this is, it's coming into where you're starting to see Marilla taking on the 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 role as a caretaker. Yeah. That Matthew is relieved of his concerns about mm-hmm. Anne going back. Anne is starting to, you know, she's starting to to get a feel for how Marilla is mm-hmm. and to sort of dial in how what this could be like for her to stay. Mm-hmm. And to right. wish and pray for her to stay, not just to have, oh, I wish I had a nice house. Oh, I wish I had a family yeah. of my own. It's like she wants to stay here at Green Gables. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so now all of this long journey to get to this point, you're starting to see all the characters coming around into a way where it's like, okay, now we're starting to get the, it feels like the story can progress from here. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, we've gotten right. the things taken care of we needed to take care of, and now we get the, the lens looking forward. Well, how's Anne going to, you know, deal her yeah. past behind her, a potentially bright future? Mm-hmm. How is she now going to interact with everything in this farm yeah. going forward? For for me, I felt this, this episode was about Marilla. Interesting. Uh, really about, okay. uh, about yeah. her. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, because she is the decision maker in this group. Mm-hmm. You know, she's the you know, she's the one, and it kind of goes back to me for me also the question of were you taken care of well? Did they take? Yeah. Did they, you know were you treated well? And that question to her means certain things. One of those certain things is that one. You know, again, you know, she's shocked at the fact lack of <clears throat> religious education for Anne. That, you know, that's to her, that is something that is important and worthwhile. And, in, and you know, we're, you know, we see her being reserved as opposed to the Marilla at the beginning of the, of the series where she's like, ah! but here she's just kind of like, OK, she's buying in, you know, John, as you're saying, she's kind of buying into her role of the caretaker and she's seizing on opportunities to go, oh, I can do this for her. Oh, I can do that for her. Okay, well, if I'm going to do this, then that X Y Z needs to happen. Yeah. And so, you know, this this while it's you know I don't want to harp on the whole theological thing yeah. of it all, <clears throat> but that's an important part of Marilla's life, and she's just like, I am here. I am supposed to take care of this child. Yeah. And this is this is the way that I'm being told that I I need to do this <laughs> for for this person, mm-hmm. this yeah. little person. And so, you know, she's starting to understand what she needs to dial back on, and and hopefully, like you say, is is it's a process, or or else there wouldn't have been a book. But you know, <laughs> it's right. But we're seeing here that you know she is like, kind of liking the idea of it. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm glad you brought up the religion thing because this is a time when. If your child didn't show up to Sunday school, people would say, why isn't your child in Sunday school? Right. Like, everyone knows who is or is not in church because it's, you know, tiny church. Everyone goes to the same church. It's very communal. So, uh, it, it, you know, there are serious social consequences to <coughs> not knowing these things and not being able to speak to them. Um, so besides, you know, and I'm not saying that Marilla doesn't care about the religious stuff. But there are multiple dimensions to it besides just know your prayers. Right. Um, you yeah, know, I think that's, that's all great points. Um, I, it's also fascinating to me to see the uh, the progression here in uh, in Anne, how she starts the episode you know, down in the dumps, very understandably, and then kind of how she swings back up and then comes back down to a very reasonable place, right? She's not dancing around elated. Uh, she's not crying because things might might go poorly. She's just kind of finding that, that reasonable middle ground. 
Um, and then, like to your point, John, I think what's what's what makes this an interesting turning point is that Anne now has this new life in front of her, but yeah. all of her baggage is still there. You know, she's still got all of that trauma, all of that flightiness, all of those various issues that she's going to have to that she will bring to this new situation is not going to be a complete rebirth for her. How is that going to impact her experience and uh, you know getting along with people and so forth? Well, for whether it's a book, whether it's a manga, whether it's an anime, there there are those quality written things that give you a dimension of character. Yeah. That makes the story going forward much richer. Yeah. And it's like mm -hmm. you could just say Anne was an orphan she had a bad time mm -hmm. and now she's trying to find a family the you know not the end but <laughs> start but start the story from that point mm -hmm. where you just you, you, you kind of yeah so she had some tragic stuff going you can start it from forward. here right right like she, she, she's right. getting adopted right yeah but instead we have the, the the sort of depth and complexity of all these people in their lives that are now changing unalterably at this point going forward yeah and it's like that's kind of a neat place to see 100 <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah i i think i i love that idea of this as a as a turning point um yeah because i think it, it very much is um, they've committed to the to the journey yeah mm -hmm. and hints at what that will look like in the future you know that marilla has an open side she has the, the capacity for humor, perhaps. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. She she can. Uh, she she is committed to doing the right thing, but she can do that with care, um, and seeing how and if she will do that in the future. Well, her imagination springing open with the gimlet image. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was a, a, an unexpectedly funny moment because mm -hmm. you don't get the sense that she spends a lot of time imagining anything. No. <laughs> like, yeah. Milking the cows, cooking the food, caring for the house, making sure Matthew's okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So um, it will be it'll be entertaining to see how she opens up her own imagination. <laughs> and also like there are lots of different approaches on this. Samuel Johnson uh, fought his imagination. He didn't like the fact that his mind would run around and run off to all these different places. He would much rather have had a more quiet mind. And so I think Marilla also has, to an extent, disciplined herself to avoid those things, to not pay attention to those flights of fancy, which is not something that she has use for. Mm -hmm. uh, and so being confronted with somebody that is all imagination... <laughs> <laughs> is uh, 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 quite a bit to deal with, you know. Mm, mm. <laughs> but will they ever run hand in hand, the three, through a field of flowers singing? Will that ever happen here? <laughs> uh, I, I Hard think, to imagine. I don't think Marilla. I don't think Marilla will grow that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts? Great work. Oh God, it's an upbeat. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, we finally made it through the the trough of the, you know, the introduction of Anne's past and all that stuff. And now we have some happiness to look forward to. Oh, my God. The journey up the mountain of joy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Good news. Sarah has calmed down a bit and... Honestly, so have I. Uh, we're going to have to put our heads together to come up with some defenses against whatever this animal is. Sarah, Sarah already has some good ideas, and honestly, this has been kind of a good thing. It's drawn us, uh, the two of us a little closer, gotten us to think about things a little bit more, and, uh, uh, you, you know, something quite like a crisis and uh, something to focus on, to focus the mind, and... Um, just bring a community closer, even if it's just two people. Turns out it's good to have someone else around. Anyway, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next time with episode six of Anne of Green Gables. Until then, 
watch more anime.